Right now, as you're listening to this, you are being robbed. Robbed of brain cells, maybe? And it's a sister called capitalism that's robbing you. Just reminding everyone that capitalism is when all human interaction is voluntary. So he's saying you're being robbed when there isn't someone pointing a gun to your head. You have to have an Ivy League education to be this stupid. Every day when you check into work for your boss, you are being taken advantage of and stolen from. No, you're not. Also, what about people who have started their own businesses? People who are self-employed? Do they exploit themselves? Do they steal from themselves? Does it seem to you like there's something missing from this equation? Theft is when someone forces you to give up something you have, like Wolf constantly advocates his holy government doing. And exploitation is when someone gets what they want by lying to you, the way Wolf does in every single video. So like all sociopaths, he has to accuse other people of doing what he advocates, because he needs to give himself cover. You're being deprived of the full value of what you contribute. And who decides what the full value is? Once again, value is subjective. What you think the full value of your labor is may or may not be what someone else thinks it is. Anyone who puts forward capital, money, to set workers in motion becomes thereby a capitalist. And again, only someone made stupid by an Ivy League education could think that's a bad thing. Capitalists have one goal, and that goal is to turn a profit. But that's everybody's goal. That's the whole reason anyone ever does anything, because they think the benefit they get out of it outweighs whatever the costs are. Do you go eat at a restaurant? It's because you believe the enjoyment and nutrition you get from the meal is worth more than what the restaurant charges you for it. Do you like solving jigsaw puzzles? You do that because the enjoyment you get from doing it outweighs not only what you paid for the puzzle, but also the time and effort you put into solving it. It's the same when you work a job. You believe the amount you get paid is worth more than the time and effort you put into whatever your job is. If that weren't the case, you wouldn't do it. Conversely, your boss thinks that the benefit he gets from your labor is worth more than what he pays you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be employed. It's this way with every single voluntary human interaction ever. Everyone does the things they do because they're figuring it's worth the time and effort. And that's all profit is. Anyone who complains about other people seeking profit is therefore a hypocrite of the highest order. Capitalists need to maximize profit to the exclusion of all other considerations or they'll get eaten up by capitalists who are smarter or more ruthless than them. That's the jungle law of the market. Yeah, there's no such thing. I'll just quote Murray Rothbard from his book, Power and Market. The free market, in fact, is precisely the diametric opposite of the jungle society. The jungle is characterized by the war of all against all. One man gains only at the expense of another by seizure of the latter's property. In the free market, on the other hand, one man gains only through serving another, though he may also retire into self-sufficient production at a primitive level if he so desires. It is precisely through the peaceful cooperation of the market that all men gain through the development of the division of labor and capital investment. To apply the principle of the survival of the fittest to both the jungle and the market is to ignore the basic question. Fitness for what? The fit in the jungle are those most adept in the exercise of brute force. The fit on the market are those most adept in the service of society. The free market, therefore, transmutes the jungle's destructive competition for meager subsistence into a peaceful, cooperative competition in the service of oneself and others. In the jungle, some gain only at the expense of others. On the market, everyone gains. It is the market, the contractual society, that wrests order out of chaos, that subdues nature, and eradicates the jungle, that permits the weak to live productively, or out of gifts from production, in a regal style compared to the life of the strong in the jungle. Furthermore, the market, by raising living standards, permits man the leisure to cultivate the very qualities of civilization that distinguish him from the brutes. 
It is precisely statism that is bringing back the rule of the jungle, bringing back conflict, disharmony, caste struggle, conquest and the war of all against all, and general poverty. In place of the peaceful struggle of competition and mutual service, statism substitutes calculational chaos and the death struggle of social Darwinist competition for political privilege and for limited subsistence. Again, Wolf has to turn all that around so you don't realize that it's his sociopathic system that exploits and robs you. Confession through projection. But where does this profit come from? I just explained that. It's a subjective valuation where each individual decides that whatever endeavor he's currently engaged in is worth more to him than the time, money, and effort he's putting into it. Here's a little thought experiment. Meet Harold. Harold has a chain of buildings full of kitchens full of ingredients. Okay, so where did he get the buildings from? Where did he get the ingredients from? Why do you socialist morons always, and I mean always, skip this part? But Harold doesn't know how to make a burger himself. How does Harold get someone to make enough burgers that he can sell them and turn a profit? It's not a trick question. No, it's not. He hires someone. Now here's the question for you, the question you never seem to want to answer or even acknowledge the existence of. Why doesn't the burger flipper do all of this on his own? If he's the only one creating value, why doesn't he just make the burgers directly and take all the money? Because, as anyone with more than two brain cells to knock together can see, he's not the only one creating value. The business owner creates some of the value when he pays to have the buildings built, or sources the ingredients, or whatever. Wolf is going to have you believe the business owner contributes nothing. The only way anyone could ever believe that is if they've never run a business themselves. Which is made more obvious by the fact that he says that Harold doesn't know how to make the burger himself. Well then how does he know how to train his employees to do it? The money he uses to pay you is what we call capital. No, Wolf. Capital is what was done beforehand, when the buildings were built, and the contracts with the suppliers were made, and the advertising and everything else that actually brings in customers was done. Jeez Louise, Wolf, this is basic economics here! With every video, it becomes easier and easier to see why the one time someone actually tried to implement your idea of economics, George Papandreou when he was Prime Minister of Greece, it tanked the economy! Papandreou saved the country only by repudiating what Wolf taught him. And if you were paid for the full value of your labor, you'd be making 2000 Well, why would that be the case? Again, you're leaving out everything that the business owner did by getting the place built and the ingredient source and everything else. Another question none of you socialist idiots want to answer. Why does everyone who works for a company deserve to profit except the owner? No matter what, you've been stolen from. No, you haven't. You've done the amount of work you agreed to do in exchange for the amount you agreed to do it for. Well, at least until government comes in and takes a big chunk of it through income tax, why is it not theft for government to take at a minimum 15% of your paycheck through force, especially when the profit rate is generally less than 4%? Let's look at some numbers. I'll use 2019 since that was before the COVID pandemic screwed up basically every economy in the world. That year, the Walmart CEO's total compensation was $24 million. Now, anyone who's not a total ignoramus knows that CEOs work their butts off, but just for the sake of the argument, let's look at Wolf's deliberate and outright lie that they don't do anything. So. How much surplus wealth did the CEO extract from Walmart employees in 2019? In 2019, Walmart had 2.2 million employees worldwide. That means that the CEO quote-unquote stole a grand total of $11 from each employee for the entire year. Are you really going to tell me that $11 a year constitutes some hideous exploitation of workers that make on average $26,000 a year? Think I cherry-picked it? Okay, what about another much-maligned corporation? Amazon. 
In 2019, the total compensation of CEO Jeff Bezos was $1.68 million, and they employed 798,000 people. So the CEO extracted a surplus value of $2.10 from each employee. Such exploitation. How much bigger you think their tax bill is going to be? Especially when you add in all of the taxes, like gas taxes and sales taxes and everything else. The rich get richer, and the little guy barely gets by. Lie, 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 lie! Wolf, you have personally been shown on numerous occasions that this absolutely is not true. In fact, capitalism is the only system that has ever been shown to help the little guy get ahead. It certainly isn't your wonderful socialism. Or making them more productive without increasing their wages. When that happens, the result is that prices are lower. Their wages may not increase nominally, but their purchasing power does. That is, until some lying psycho like you gets into power and decides to take the extra money in taxes or inflate the money supply to get the prices back up, or things like that. Things that actually do rob the poor and working class of purchasing power. You and Harold are two different types of people. You belong to two different classes. Lie, 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 lie! There is no difference between the kind of person who starts a business and the kind of person who works for someone else. Anyone in a capitalist system can switch from one to the other. It's only not the case with your psychopathic government. By heaping on regulation after regulation, you make it difficult for people to start their own business. By taxing people to give subsidies to favored corporations, you make sure they can continue to profit even though others are creating more value. By furthering eugenics programs like minimum wage, you make it harder for poor and marginalized people to get ahead. And by creating a political system that is absolutely based on theft and forceful exploitation, you create the only class system that really exists in this country. The political class like you versus the rest of us. And again, it's why people like you have to distract us with bogus class distinctions like rich versus poor, men versus women, whites versus people of color, and so on. Just confession through projection to cover for your forceful exploitation of others so you can live your rich, fat life even though you've never done a lick of actual work. Hey, thanks for watching! Please hit like and subscribe and keep these videos coming by donating, becoming a subscriber and getting special benefits, or even for free with their time. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you!